Hello everyone, this is the third video lesson about word problems. All of the word problem lessons are numbered 5, and because this is the third one, it's 5C. This one focuses on work problems, sometimes also called work rate problems. Here's an example. Actually, here are four examples. Now, if you already know how to do these, then these can go very quickly. If you have no idea how to do these, then you should quickly realize that uh, you're not going to get anywhere. What I don't want to have happen to you, though, I don't want you to spend tons of time at this only to find out that you don't really know how to do these. So hit the pause button. Do what you can with these. If you understand them well, that's great. Um, but I'm about to show you how to do them if you don't know how. When you come back, I'll show you the answers to these four. Okay, I'm going to assume that you've worked through these. Here are the answers. Now, you may be kind of close on these if you just kind of roughly guessed. Close is not good enough in this case. This is not horseshoes. Um, so you have to get the answer right. Uh, these may be rounded. I, I can't remember whether they're rounded or not. I didn't um, type up these answers. But um, uh, if you don't have a decimal very close to 4.24, then don't assume that you get this just because you got something kind of near that. Um, again, um, if you didn't know how to do these though, don't worry, I'm about to show you how. If you did, if you have all four of these down, why don't you just go ahead and fast forward this video to the green slide, and right after that green slide is another set of problems, and if you can do those, then you're all set. Okay. As promised, let's walk through one of these. This is a different one than the ones I've just shown you. This is a story about painting an apartment, and in this case there are two different people, Kali and Trevin, and they're both going to work on it together. Kali can do the apartment by himself, herself, I don't know um, the name Kali, in seven hours. If Trevin did it, he would do it in five hours. Together, well I'm going to call it H hours. I always try to use a letter that helps me remember what the units are. So together, Callie and Trevin will add up to a total of H. And remember, the question was how long would it take? So that makes sense that I'm calculating this in hours. Well, this is the key point to get, or one of the key points. If they just worked at it for one hour, well, Callie, it would take him seven hours. I'm saying him, it might be her. I would take, it would take her seven hours to do the whole job. So in one hour, she would only have done one-seventh of the job. Trevin, in one hour, would only have done one-fifth of the job. So now let's put this information here together with Kali plus Trevin equals H. And we'll realize that one over seven, remember Kali was seven, Trevin was five. So if we're saying Kali is one-seventh and Trevin is one-fifth, then instead of H, I've got 1 over h. Now, you've learned back in middle school, and I hope even in elementary school, how to add fractions. You've got to find that lowest common denominator. In this case, that's 35. So we can change these fractions to 5 over 35 plus 7 over 35 equals that same thing here, 1 over h. All right, put the 5 and the 7 together. We realize 1 over h is equal to 12 over 35. Well, I don't want 1 over h. I want h. I've got to flip this. So that means h is 35 over 12. Now that might not look like a very clear number, but pump, plug it into a calculator. 35 over 12 is 2.916 repeating, roughly 2.9. That's your answer. 2.9 what? Well, remember I said h was selected to stand for hours. In about 2.9 hours, Trevin and Kali would be done if they worked on the house together, I mean the apartment together. Let's look through this one more time and realize I've actually only taken three steps to solve this problem. I started off by taking the pieces of information, the numbers that I had here, the work rate for one person plus the work rate for the other person, and I just made them in fractions that were reciprocals. So instead of five, it was one-fifth. Instead of, where is it, seven, it was one-seventh. Is equal to one over the total. Then I had to find common denominators and put it together. That's middle school stuff or even elementary school stuff. Then all I did was flip 
that fraction. Instead of 12 over 35, we made it 35 over 12, and it became 2.9. So again, three steps. Make two fractions, one for each person's rate, but flip them upside down. Second step, find combined like terms and combine the two fractions. Third step, flip the fraction. That's all there is to this. Hopefully, now that you see those three steps, you can go back to those four problems and realize now that they will go fairly quickly for you. Hit the pause button and do all four. When you come back, I'll show you those answers again. Okay, this time I'm hoping that this went quickly for you. If, you, if it didn't, just rewind the video a little bit to that last slide I showed you and look at those three steps more carefully. But hopefully it did, and there are those four answers. Now, I'm assuming you paused if you needed to to study the answers further. As promised, there's that green slide I was talking about, and here's the next type of problem. What if you want to figure out how quickly or how well or um, how one worker would work? What if you were given information about the whole job and were asked about one worker? Well, hit the pause button and read this problem. And when you're ready, give this one a try. Again, if you know how to do this, and I show you the answer, then you'll be able to fast forward to the very end of this and to one last green slide. But if not, um, uh, don't worry, I'm about to show you how to do this. Okay, I'm gonna assume that you've solved this problem or worked on this problem as much as you want to, this problem about the, uh, the picking of apples. 14 hours is how long it would take Rob to do this. You see how to calculate 14? Like I said, fast forward the video to the green slide. If not, let's talk about how this was calculated. First of all, let's remind ourselves back when we were talking about painting the apartment of the three steps. Remember the three steps were these ones. I won't talk them through all over again. But let's apply, these are the numbers for painting an apartment. We want the numbers for picking apples. Well, this first step, remember this was that fraction where you flipped um, the numbers for each person upside down. But in this case, I have the total. I have 6.16 hours. And I have the amount for one of the people. It's 11. What I don't have is the amount for Rob. So I've got to figure out, how do I figure out that number this time? Well, once again, I'm going to need, oh, I'm sorry, before I forget, I picked this problem to show you because it has a misleading number in there, a red herring, some people call it, 40 bushels. It doesn't matter what this number is. Think of this as the job. The job is to pick all the bushels you need to pick. Who cares if it's 40 or if it's 4 or 444? The point is, how long does it take to pick all the apples you need to do? How long does it take Rob to do that? So. This number 40 is never again going to appear in the problem. Instead, I've got to find that lowest common denominator again. 11 times 6.16 turns out to be 67.76. How do I use this number? Well, multiply the whole problem, in other words, both sides, by 67.76. If you do that, you'll find what you end up with. Let's go back and look at this. I had 1 over 7 plus 1 over Rob equals 1 over 6.16. Multiplying through, all I ended up with was 67.76 on top of these fractions. Well, 67.76 I can put in my calculator. That's 6.16. I can put this also in my calculator. That turns out to be 11. But wait, wait a minute. This should have been, um, well, if not obvious, it shouldn't be a surprise at any rate. What happened here was this 1 over 11 became that number, 6.16. And likewise, this 1 over 6.16 became that number. So really what you've done is you've swapped these two numbers and made them the numerators over 1. And you're left with what you had here before, 67.76 over Rob. Well, like I said, I want to know what Rob is. So I've got a first, and by the way, this is step 2, basically, of the three steps. I've got to move 6.16 over. So now. For step three, 67.76 over Rob is equal to, well, what's 11 minus 6.16? My calculator tells me it's 4.84. Well, that's nice, but I want to know what Rob's value is. So I move Rob 
over here, and I move 4.84 there. In other words, I multiplied both sides by Rob and got Rob over here. I divided both sides by 4.84 and got 4.84 over here. So this is the setup I have. Rob is now equal to 67.76 divided by 4.84. My calculator tells me that's 14. And that's my answer. It would take 14 hours for Rob to do it alone. Once again, hit the pause button if you need to, but make sure you get what we've done here. All we've really done, we've created this same set of uh, uh, rational, this same rational equation here, or set of um, fractions. And second step, we simply swapped the 11 to the numerator here, or swapped the 11 to this place, swapped the 6.16 to this place, and Above Rob now, I have 6.16 times 11. Third step now is to just move everything around so I solve to find out what Rob is. So those are the three steps. I hope that makes sense. Hit the pause button if it doesn't, and study this slide further. If it does, as promised, there's the next green slide. These are the last two problems. Now hit the pause button. Read each of the two, work them through, and I will show you the answers. Okay, I'm going to assume that you've paused and worked these out. There are the answers. I hope you remembered in this second question here, 10 feet by 10 feet, that was a misleading set of numbers. You never actually needed that to answer the question. The job was to dig a hole. It doesn't matter the size of the hole, it's how long it takes you to dig the hole. That's what you're being asked. In the first question, I hope you got eight hours without any decimal. In the second question, I haven't worked this through to find out if it's a longer decimal than 10.01, but make sure you got something very close to this um, where only a rounding error would make the difference. If you've got all of this, great. If not, come in with questions. I'll be happy to see you next class.